The red goshawk is an inherently rare species. We know next to nothing about them, and for that reason they've reached a near mythical status, uh, particularly amongst the birdwatching community of Australia. Now for the first time we're lifting the veil on this really cryptic raptor, and what we've been finding changes everything. I'm Chris McColl, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Queensland. So my particular passion and area of interest is uh, birds of prey and it's a real privilege to be able to work on Australia's rarest, the red goshawk. Red goshawks aren't doing well, they're in a rather precipitous decline, particularly through eastern Australia. Northern Australia is now critical to this species' survival and it is a patchwork of different land uses with everything from protected areas, indigenous lands, cattle stations and mining leases. Therefore, we need to get everyone in the same tent working together to help inform the conservation of this species. And to try and improve the conservation outlook, we really need to learn a whole lot more than we currently understand. We've spent years searching for these birds and across all of mainland Australia we've only been able to find around 20 breeding territories and nests and so today we're actually going to check in on a couple of them. So this nest back here in these woodlands I found just a couple months ago and we've come back today to hopefully see if there's a chick or possibly two chicks in the nest and I've got a feeling there is because I can hear a slight begging just off in the distance here. There she is. That's the female. So each year with the tropical monsoon, a lot of these stick nests are actually blown from the trees and the birds have to rebuild. So the first job I have each season is to head on out and find the new nests. Oh, here we go. Okay, hello little fella. Oh, yep, he's flapping. I just saw it. But we've definitely got one nestling. Uh, I'd age him at about three weeks, so he will grow rapidly. Oh, look, he's walking on the rim of the nest. You can see everything. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So she's probably, yeah, just sitting tight on the lookout for the, for the male to bring in food. Oh, what's that? So the male has brought in prey and the female, it's been transferred to the female. The male is on the nest and he's guarding the chick and it looks like the female is preparing the prey so she can pluck the feathers off the prey. It looks like the size of a rainbow lorikeet. And in a moment now, she will come back to the nest and start feeding the chick. Oh, yep, there she goes. The male's left. Now she's on the nest with the nestling and she's gonna start dispensing that prey to the chick, feeding him. Oh wow, this is a real treat. Um, so we'll come back in December and, and put a tracker on this chick before it leaves this territory to find its own place.
It's two months later, it's December, we're back to check on these chicks. Uh, between now and our uh, last visit, there's been a rather hot fire come through, uh, but there's also been early wet season rain, so things are starting to green up. Uh, it's getting humid, and the chicks have now successfully fledged from the nest. This time we've got a whole team with us to help with the trapping and the tagging of these juveniles. So it's a pretty great fit. To understand juvenile survival rates in their first and second year before they ultimately become breeding adults themselves, we're attaching GPS satellite trackers to the backs of these juvenile birds. These trackers are really lightweight, they're micro-sized, they're solar-powered, so they recharge from the sun, and because of that, they last two to three years, typically. That's good. We get five GPS locations from every bird, every day, 365 days a year, all sent to us remotely via satellites. Yeah, it's a real thrill to be able to firstly successfully catch and tag the bird safely and then to release it back at the nest site. The first bird we tagged, the female, uh, that was a really, really nice outcome because we let her go and her mum had already come in with prey. Uh, she passed it to the female immediately and then we were able to watch her completely go about her business feeding on the prey and forget all about the fact that we just caught her and tagged her. These tags have been the game changer that we've needed. We're learning so much valuable information about these birds that even 10, 20 years ago simply was not possible. We've tracked juveniles from Cape York to as far as Central Australia. So we are literally redrawing the distribution map of this species. Our findings suggest that the red goshawk's conservation status should be immediately uplisted from a category of vulnerable to endangered. This status change has already occurred at the IUCN level, and right now the Australian government is assessing it for a similar change. We can't attempt to conserve this species without baseline knowledge on their population, their movements and their environmental requirements. Without these GPS tags, it's all simply guesswork. Every tracker that I get out there will help us tailor conservation actions to boost their prospects of survival. Ultimately, the scientist in me just wants them to do what they're going to do. Some will live, some will die, and that's the information that we need. But on a more personable level, of course, I'd like to see all of them successfully reach breeding age and go on to create their own little red goshawks, and on and on it goes. And we've got a self-sustaining population in perpetuity. That's, that's ultimately what I'd like to see. To be able to work on this incredible, unique Australian endemic raptor species has been a, a true privilege, um, a, a great responsibility, and uh, hopefully some of the work that we've been able to do is really gonna increase their chances of survival in the long term. <laughs>